You know, your your first book, Creative Dreaming, your first major book, mm -hmm. was something of a, 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 created a major social impact because of the fact, as I understand it, that you went back and looked at the Sonoy Indians of Malaysia and the unique ways in which they treated their dreams and suggested that we in the West might learn something from that. Well, I think there's no question, Jeff, that um, Westerners were used to thinking of dreams as something that happened to you and then you work with them. You, you work with a therapist or you discuss the symbols, but um, you waited till the dream was finished. And what was different about creative dreaming was saying that, hey, you can get ready to dream. You can prepare to dream. You can do something within the dream mm -hmm. to change your dream. And people had just never thought about it that way before. And when they began to try some of these techniques, they found, indeed, it made a difference, not only in their dreams, but what happened in their waking lives afterwards. How did you first develop this approach to dreaming? Well, some of it, you know, I've written my dreams down since I was 14. Yeah, you have a collection of 30, <laughs> 40,000 dreams by now, I understand. Oh, goodness, I, I haven't counted <laughs> them recently. But uh, I'm 52, and there's 20-some volumes of these dreams recorded. So when I was young, I began to notice that just by being paying a lot of attention to what was going on in my dreams, things were happening. Yeah. For example, um, in one dream, uh, one of the characters, a, a young girlfriend of mine, said, um, do you know I represent sex to you in your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> this is in the dream. In the dream. Uh -huh. And I said, no. I, she says, haven't you noticed I always wear shorts? <laughs> you know, so uh -huh. that in, at that stage of my life, I guess that was uh, pretty daring. Yeah. Um, but my dreams began to comment Mm -hmm. on themselves and that I didn't realize it but that was the beginning of what mm -hmm. we call lucid dreaming mm -hmm. a dream in which you know that you're dreaming and you can change the action of the dream while it's happening lots of people notice this uh, happening to themselves for example uh, one woman told me that uh, when she was little she often had these recurrent dreams about a witch and one night she said to herself, this the darn dream about the witch again. You know, I'm not going to wake up screaming. I'm going to stay asleep and see what happens. You know, and just by noticing that you've had this dream before or saying to yourself, this is just a dream. I can mm -hmm. wake up if I want to. While you're in the dream. While you're in the dream. Mm -hmm. Uh, this very special state of lucid mm -hmm. dreaming can give you a power. It's in sort the of dream like a state. cybernetic feedback system it or something. Kind of like you become aware of the fact that you're dreaming, conscious of the fact that you're unconscious. Right? Exactly so. It, uh -huh. it seems like a paradox, and at first, yeah. people didn't believe that this was possible. And now, you know, we've had a lot of laboratory studies that have proved that, in fact, some people can learn to. Mm -hmm. um, do this can even be trained to become uh -huh. lucid in their dreams. But is creative dreaming the way you have written about it in your first book quite the same thing as lucid dreaming? Is, aren't there some differences? Well, there are definitely differences, uh, but I think that one leads to the other. Yes. And what I was saying in creative dreaming is that there are many ways to use the resource that's within us you know, every night when we go to sleep, four or five times a night, our bodies experience this particular physiological state that has psychological, symbolic meaning, mm -hmm. but that we can learn from this. We can actively use our dreams. And that's what I call creative dreaming. Mm -hmm. That is setting up a, a relationship. You know, it's remarkable to think that we spend, most of us, a third of our lives asleep and a large mm -hmm. portion of our sleeping lives dreaming, and yet... Yeah, about four years. <laughs> four years of yeah. a human lifetime dreaming, and uh -huh. it's usually ignored exactly. by people. There's an old tel uh, saying in the, of the Jewish people in the Talmud that a mm -hmm. dream uninterpreted is like a letter unopened. And, I agree. <laughs> uh, 
Yet most people don't begin to work with their dreams That's at all or exactly pay them any so. credence whatsoever. You obviously recommend that people do just the opposite, that there's a lot of value to be had. Mm -hmm. Many people, though, can't remember their dreams or they claim they can't. Well, you know, Jeffrey, remembering your dreams is a kind of memory skill mm -hmm. and anybody can learn it. You know, unless the person is on heavy drugs or alcohol. There are certain drugs, sleeping pills, for example, will actually inhibit the physiological dream state. Mm -hmm. And when you go off the pills, then you have this terrible, what we call a REM rebound, yeah. uh, with very frightening nightmares. But unless you have this situation where the person is inhibiting their dreams, Anybody can learn to remember their dreams, but there's, there's specific suggestions, of course, that I mm -hmm. make in creative dreaming. If you want to talk about some ideas, would be. Well, I think that anybody who's interested in mm -hmm. remembering their dreams, just knowing that they can, I suppose, for example, putting a diary near your bed so yeah. you can write them down. A pad and, and pen is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Just deciding that you're going to remember your dreams can mm -hmm. help. And one important thing that's helpful is to keep your eyes closed when you wake up. Oh. You know, as soon as you begin to move around and open your eyes and get all sorts of other stimuli mm -hmm. coming into your system, uh, this very delicate dream recall mm -hmm. gets broken easily mm -hmm. if, if you're not used to it. And one of the things that I recommend is lying still and keeping your eyes shut and just catching hold of the last little bit of the dream. Uh -huh. And oh. very often it hooks on to the scene before uh -huh. and the scene before. Well, these are very delicate states of consciousness, they are. really. Yeah. yeah.